writing it out. We're going to have you say their name and spell it for you and try to get contact info so you can maybe follow up with them. And then finally, important one, we have law enforcement, right? So we have either the officer, so I'm just going to say police, or the records. Okay, there's going to be an incident report that comes out from this. You definitely, that's public information. So you should be able to get that. And that is a secondary source and that it's not a primary source like an interview, but it's going to be very useful to you to confirm things and to get contact information and so forth. So that fits into this category. Okay, now the tricky thing is, is that students are often very, very shy about talking to complete strangers. That's why next week you're going to be sent out to, to interview complete strangers. All right, you need to get into the habit of that, especially if you're going to go into journalism. Even if you're not going to go into journalism, you need to get in the habit of that. All right, just, let's just say you are going to go into journalism for the purposes of this course. Right, because once you, if you take any more classes from me, or you go to over to Zach Gershberg, um, yes, yeah, then you'll be expected to do these things. And he was telling me how these students are afraid. They're afraid to interview people. They won't. They won't call them. And then they said, "I can't. It's too late for me to interview them." You've got to push yourself to do it. Okay. So imagine a new personality for yourself, where you're very pushy, you're nosy, and you won't take no for an answer. And you get that interview. You arrange it well in advance, because if you wait too long, the person won't be able to talk to you. Michael, did you have a question? Um, so the person we go out and interview, could it be someone we already know, or would you prefer a complete stranger? You can, it cannot be someone you already know, and I have ways of finding out that. So, by the way, you're gonna, you don't even know where you're going, so you can't, unless the person's <laughs> waiting outside and hovering, you know, into the shrubs, and they go with you. I'm going to be assigning you a place to go, are we going alone or with you? No, with, we'll go at least with one other person. You'll have a video camera with you. So I'll be able to nice. see everything. You know, I also have a body cam. So I can get a backup. Each one person, each group will have a GoPro body cam on you. Really? Okay. Oh my God, Devin. Yeah. That's something. Uh, Those are on like 600 bucks a piece. <laughs> 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 they're just, like so expensive. <laughs> yeah, the victim often is not going to talk to you. Okay, so is that also so. one that's it's more likely, though, you'll get the victim um, than the suspect. Okay. And, you know, that the victim's family can kind of uh, step in if necessary, but ideally you get the victim or somebody impacted. Okay? Sometimes the police won't, so witnesses are probably... If you don't get any of these, you're in trouble. You, know, you want to at least get the witnesses. And then, um, you know, some, some officers, uh, they have, you know, they, they don't talk to media. It has to be... They're, they're a certain person, public relations person. Is that true, Chris? I see you nodding. Yeah. I don't talk to anybody. I, I've been approached by media here on campus, especially within the last few weeks. But can you? I have to clear it with Adrian King, yeah. who is the marketing director. Well, no, but you work for Income, though, too, right? Yes. But I'm, can you? Out there, I'm more, out there, I'm more, have more, right. you know, way to, to talk. So Chris is an officer in our class who works both for the campus okay. and in in income. See, I'm always correct in when I say that. So I'm not ready to say it right. Okay. Now, the temptation will be yes. I have to become from Ido. You're going to be tempted as junior reporters. Would you become junior reporters to depend too heavily on this? All right, be very careful about that because that's very sloppy. Don't depend so much on the records, the, the incident report, the crime report, right? You, have to, you need to get talk to people. Okay, and also, try not to rely too heavily on a single source. Okay. One source. Okay, because that person may have incorrect information and they may be incredibly biased and they'd be outright lying to you. All right, so don't rely too heavily on one source. All right, now, one of the good reasons to get somebody, some of these people, is our goal in news is often this. We want to scoop the opposition. I don't think I've talked about this. Go to vocabulary term. We want to scoop. When you want to scoop, that means you want something nobody else has. None of the other newspapers <coughs> have it. None of the other TV news stations have it. You're the only one who got the interview with the suspect. A jail cell interview, right? You're the only one who got it, so they will even plug that um, you know, advertise with that, you know, 
exclusive Channel 10 News got action news. We were the first ones to the scene. You know, we got the suspect. We got the surveillance footage exclusive to channel. You know, they'll, th they'll throw that around. It's a very so good thing. It's kind of sad, but news is very competitive. Another good thing to get is detail, okay? Especially if you're writing for print media, we want to get detail of things, right? So what the suspect, you know, look like, um, maybe the age of the suspect, uh, the, <coughs> any little things that might have happened, things that went wrong, accidentally dropped his wallet at the scene. Well, that would definitely be a detail you want to include, right? Um, and getting details really help tell the story and will give it more, more of a reason for people to read it. Okay, okay, so get those details, get those descriptive details. And yes, very important to get quotes. Even in something that you don't have much time to write it, you need to get some quotes in that. Okay, now here's a big one. You need to tell the story, I'm going to come over to here, in human terms. Terms. Okay, so for one thing that means, what's the impact? What's the, it might be a human interest type impact. Here's an example. Okay. Smoke billowing from the accident scene reportedly was visible 30 miles away. Westbound interstate traffic was backed up as far as five miles. Several streets became snarled for several hours when traffic was diverted to Business Loop 70. Well, that's a lot of detail. Okay, so that's a, um, an impact in terms of, you know, that impacts me trying to get home. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I wonder what that the accident was. I tried to get, drive through there and I was stopped. Okay, but it could also be an impact in terms of individuals' <coughs> lives were ruined by this, right? So, so there could be, you know, lots of different types of impacts. Um, and then conversational. It's going to be really tempting to take wording from this. Or if you interview the police officer, you know, he throws around these terms that we don't use in regular language. Okay, so um, give me some examples, Chris, of, exa of uh, the, the lingo, the jargon of law enforcement. 89. But in terms of like the, uh, the way that they word the charges sometimes, it can be very... Uh, you know, assault and battery. What really is assault and battery? You know, you need to use regular language. And maybe later in the article, you, you say, you give the exact term, but especially early, like in the lead, if you mention the charges, you need to use just regular language, okay? Just avoid jargon. It's going to be very tempting to use it because it'll be, the record will be full of it, the, the incident report. Okay, so I've been talking a lot. But before I get, do an exercise, let's finish these. So we did the what. Okay, we did the who, okay, what else is the when, right? And yes, you should be able to get that, even, even for a first article on a, on a crime story. Um, so the when, you need to nail that down, and there's a timeline. Think of yourself like a mystery writer, right? And they're, very, they're all about time, and detectives, they're all about, okay, where were people at this time? When did it begin? When did the person leave? When did everything, every event happen? So try to get very specific points in time for the when. Okay, the person entered the bank at 3.33 p.m. Okay, get as close as you can, don't make it up, right, but, but get, get something very specific. The, they, uh, they robbed the bank and they, they filled their, their bag at 3.35 p.m. They exited the bank by 3.37 p.m. Right, try to be very specific. The police arrived at 3.50 p.m. Okay, so be very specific. Now, who, what, when, who, what, when, what else? The where, okay, the where, and that's going to be pretty obvious, the scene you're involved in, but it could go to the suspect's uh, house. You know, the suspect probably lives somewhere, right? There could be more than one where's. Um, there, there, there could be a car chase, right? So you need to get all that stuff, you know, all the information about the car chase, where they, where they ended up, where did they apprehend the suspect and all this. By the way, apprehend, not a good word for you to use as a news. People don't throw, people don't throw that word around in regular language. Right, so even if the officer uses it, you need to usually uh, use a regular, more of a conversational word. Pardon? Like arrested. arrested, taken into custody, maybe, you know. I guess apprehend, we know what that means, but just be careful about using too many long words and uh, too many fancy words. Right, right Devin? So we're writing down to what grade Yeah, that's right. So that, I didn't mean to come out and say that, but Devin is very, very smart, <laughs> and he uses big words. And I have to sometimes keep my dictionary handy for that. He's a very good writer. Okay, anyway, 
Well, it might be more than one where. Okay, what about the why and the how? Would the why be why? Yes. But we don't know that unless we can interview. Yeah, we might not get these right away. The how, you know, did the person have a gun? Um, did they yell at the person? Did they have a big bag they put money into? That would be, you know, the how would be possible in a bank robbery situation. We might be able to get that. But the why is very unusual to get that right away. Uh, the, let the police speculate on it, though. You know, or the detective, if there's a detective brought in, right? So the, or the judge might put it into, you know, I don't know, might, might accuse the person standing before. Or the suspect himself might explain why. But um, usually you don't have the why for the first article on a, on an ins at a crime or an accident or does that. You don't, you don't have necessarily the why, the whys. People want to know the whys, though. Okay, so we have that. Are there any other questions you would ask? <coughs> oh, here's some things. If you overhear a conversation, you're at a crime scene, or let's say you overhear a conversation between police, and they're talking about, Chris is talking to another, his buddy, and they're just blabbing about, you know, what, what just happened. Can you use that? You can write that down and use it, okay, because they're in a public place. Um, so, so ethically, you might have some qualms about it, but technically, yes. I mean, that's their problem. They're out in public talking about it. So as a reporter, you can use that. All right now, what, what if they're having you on and they're very good actors? That's another matter entirely. You know, it's like you have to use some discernment because they could just be happy. They know you're listening. Right, but um, that would be something you could use. <laughs> 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 yeah, or if your TV news, you know, that's where the body cam is really good. Your mind. Yes. Yeah. Then let me use it. Okay. With your own. Okay, so now I want you to turn to page ninety-eight. Yes, page ninety-eight. And if you don't have the book, I have the I have the on the Xerox. On the bottom there. Guidelines for writing stories on ac traffic accidents. Okay. This is really good. Once again, the book did a good job with showing you what's it like to go about writing an actual lead, an actual article. So writing the lead. Uh, let's have people read the, these. Begin by rem remembering that the traffic, accident, traffic accidents are commonplace. If this is all that happens, Alyssa, why don't you read that first one? Uh, two cars collided on Walnut Street Friday morning. Okay, not much going on there, right? And some people did this type of lead on their, uh, mostly the other class, but they didn't give much details. Like, who cares? I don't want to read that. Why would I read that article? Right? Then you might not have a story worth reporting. Right? It might sound cold-hearted, but several factors are usually required for accidents to become newsworthy. Serious injury or death. Or in other, w in other words, it's known as, we like, uh, it's uh, sad to say, we kind of we kind of liked serious injury and death, and the one way to put that is, if it bleeds, if it bleeds, it leads. That's very cynical, but that's true. All right. In fact, when you when they have footage of uh, this fireball like these this on the, uh, the the this train that was loaded down with some sort of gasoline or really volatile substance, yeah. I don't think there were any deaths from that. Mm -hmm. No, but it, and it was. Um, Shoot, I'm trying to think. Yeah, whatever was inside of it. Man, the footage on it was incredible, though. The footage was amazing, and they led with that. Uh, the newscast is like, "Wow, this is unfolding in West Virginia, right?" Yeah. Uh, but there weren't any injuries, so it's like, "Well, why are they leading with that?" Oh, the footage, fire footage. Oh my gosh, you couldn't even see the whole frame was just like engulfed with this flame. flames yeah. and, and <laughs> explosions, and it's like a movie or something, mm -hmm. right? But just be careful because it. Well, why are we reporting this? Just because the footage it begins to look bad if that's why you're reporting it. Okay, next one. All right, here's another one. Okay, good. So notice in both of those, well, in neither of those do you have the when first. In fact, in all four of those, we don't have the when. Be very careful. Students tend to want to put the when in there right at the beginning. You guys are really good about this. I don't think anyone did that uh, for those ones in the test. The online students did, I think. But anyway, um, you don't usually put the when first and any lead. Very rare that you put the when. Um, but here we have details specifically where it happens. Walnut Street Friday morning. Lincoln National Bank on Walnut Street Friday morning. And you see the when is at the very end. Okay, and when you get done with that, we go over to number three. Well, that's just asking you to write a lead. <laughs>